hello friends welcome to dari marani youtube channel today we will be discussing about stresses on sheep structure that is mainly panting pounding hogging slamming and all these are the main stresses stresses on sheep structure so we know that there are numerical forces act on sheep structure so they are mainly static force and dynamic force static means stationary force when we in stationary state so for the forces we lack that is not a static force dynamic force it means motion so mainly in ship dynamic force are acting because of waves and all so let's see static force are due to difference in weight and support which occurs throughout ship yeah static force mainly occurs we know that difference weight we, we are moving in a not in a stable position in a water so difference in weight and support will occur throughout ship so static force will develop and dynamic force mainly cause due to motion of ship at sea because of the water action and action of wind and wave so a static force due to difference in weight and support of the ship that will happen throughout and dynamic force because mainly due to the motion of ship mainly wind and wave these are the two numerous forces that act on ship static force and dynamic force so based on this static and dynamic force this force can be three stresses acting on ship that is longitudinal stress transverse stress and lo local stress so basic on this based on this uh, this type of static stress and sorry static force and dynamic force three type of stress are acting happening on ship that is longitudinal stress transverse stress and local stress so longitudinal stress so we can say here two forces are acting that is one is the weight of the ship so a downward force is acting on the and another vertical component is hydrostatic pressure that is opposite is acting so depending upon the direction of the bending it can be we can say the ship is hogging or sagging i will be discussing about hogging and sagging in detail in another video so here basically hogging and sagging so longitudinal stress means it is mainly due to two forces acting on the one because of the weight of ship so it will act downward mass equal mass into w is equal to mg and another force opposite vertical component acting in the hydrostatic pressure so this when depend this is the mainly longitudinal stress so depending upon direction in which this stress is happening is we can say it is whether the ship is hogging or sagging longitudinal stress and racking racking when we can say when a ship is rolling in a way that because of the beam it is beam waves when when a stick is, uh, is rolling in a sea way or is struck by beam waves the ship structure is liable to distortion transverse direction this is known as transverse stress this bend this racking we can see so here ship is in a position of rolling so some forces result this will result in a forces which tend to distort it transversely some distortion will happen so some transverse stress is happening this will cause defer deformation of the corners so when ship is rolling it will result some forces will be resulting so it so it will tend to distort the ship in a transverse direction this is known as racking so this stress mainly affects the corners of ship mainly on the tank sail bracket and the or beam knees so this must be made very strong so the corners of the said tank sail brackets and beam knees should be very strong so that it should withstand this transverse stress or otherwise when due to the rolling and all some forces will act in the transverse side of stress transverse side of the ship so this racking is effect, effect will happen so this stress will mainly affect the corners of ship so the tank sail brackets and beam knees should be made of strong material so this these are mainly uh, some structures like transverse bulkhead frames web frames these are the some of strengthening to resist racking so uh, much of uh, strengthening members are there transverse bulkhead frames web frames these are provided to strengthen the or to resist racking so we uh, we understand that uh, this racking mainly ha happens when when there is a, uh, some force due to mainly ro uh, rolling and all so some stress will happen in the transverse direction this will affect the uh, side of the uh, side or corner of the ship so mainly so that when we made the ship the tank side corners and the beam knees must be made of very strong material to resist this racking racking stress mainly transverse stress so mainly some additional members transverse bulkhead frames web frames these are provided to uh, with a great strength to resist this racking then what are the local stress local stress is mainly panting and pounding panting means it is in and out motion of shell plating caused due to fluctuation in the water pressure because of wave, water waves so here local stress means panting and pounding this is mainly in and out of when, when we go come in and out of water due to waves so what due to this big, mainly this fluctuation due to water pressure of the water waves to prevent this classification that is have made we need to have extra strength in the form of beam bracket stringer plate etc so we know the classification that is also known as this this kind of stress local stress is not uh, is we cannot it is unavoidable it is in the sea or in the water it, it is uh, uh, every time it will be there due to water pressure and all so for the we need to extra strengthen the in the form of beam bracket and stringer plate it is only necessary thing we need to do so what is panning means it is in and out of motion of shell plating 
caused by the fluctuation of water pressure because of water waves. To prevent this or to reduce this effect, classification societies have made some rules that which our our but if which uh, shell plate should be made of extra strength in the form of beam, bracket, stringer plate, etc. So here we can see the feature of a um, panding end roll in the what are the in and out motion that happens due to the water pressure happen of the water waves. So water strength means the structure at the fore end is should be strengthened to resist the panding to a distance of 0.15 of the length after forward perpendicular. So the forward structure of the forward end should be strengthened to resist the panding to the 0 0.0.15 length after forward perpendicular and the forward of collision bulkhead that is mainly panning stages will be happen are fitted not more than 2 meter apart so the forward of the collision bulkhead and panning stages it should fit not more than it, the distance uh, should not be more than 2 meters apart and the stringers are bracketed to the shell frames so the stringers should be bracketed with the shell frame and panning beams are fitted on the alternate frames under each panning stringer so the stringers should be bracketed to form shell frame and panning beams are fitted on the alternate frames and pin layers should be fitted on the center line, usually on the wash bulkhead, to tie the panting beam to them. So, what we are saying is the forward of the collision bulkhead, we fit the panting stringers, and it should not be distance should not be more than two meter apart. And the stringers are bracketed to shell frame, and these panting beams are fitted on the alternate frames under the each panting stringer. And pillar, these are fitted on the center line, usually as a wash bulkhead, to tie the panting beams together. And deep plate floors are fitted on the each frame station. Uh, fragile to upper edge between the collision bulkhead that is 15 percentage of the forward perpendicular then deep plate floors it should be also fitted between the frame station and the flange of the upper edges between the collision bulkhead that is at, at least 15 percent length of the arch perpendicular and intercoastal stringers fitted in the lane with panning stringers so what these are structures where, where we can see in the panning panning means structure of the forward is strengthened to resist panning to a distance of 0.15 length of the arch perpendicular and forward collision bulkhead we should provide the panning stringer it should fit not more than 2 meter apart and the stringers are bracketed to shell frame and padding beams fitted on the alternate frames under the each panning stringer and pillars are fitted on the center line usually to tie the padding beams together and deep plate floors are fitted on each frame station or flange to upper edges and between the collision bulkhead 15 percent that is after of forward perpendicular internal cost stringers are fitted to the padding stringers and we can say pad, uh, pounding or slamming pounding means due to at the time of heavy weather or bad sea the ship may hew and pitch. So the fore end will be emerges from the water and re enters with a slamming effect. This, so we need extra stiffening to reduce its damage. So we understand that due to ba bad weather or heavy weather, so due to the ship forward end will be go up from water and it will have a slamming effect and re enters. So this slamming effect is known as pounding. We usually call this pounding or slamming. This for this we need extra stiffening is required to reduce this damage in the forward end. This condition is you understand that. At the time of heavy weather, the ship forward end will emerges out of water and re enters with a slamming effect. This is known as pounding. So we need extra stiffening to reduce this damage. To resist the pounding, the forward structure is strengthened to be 25 to 35 percent of the length and depending upon the ship blowing coefficient. To resist this pounding effect, the ship's forward structure should be strengthened to 25 to 30 percent of the ship's block coefficient and the plate floors are fitted on each frame station, that is mainly on the transverse framing or the alternate frame station. Or longitudinal framing with intercoastal side not more than 2.2 meter. So the plate floors fitted on the each frame station that is on the transverse framing or on the alternate frame that is longitudinal framing should not be uh, have should with the intercoastal grid it should not be more than 2.2 meter apart. The plate floors fitted on each frame station that is on the transverse framing or longitudinal framing should not be more than 2.2 meter apart. And four strikes of shell plating should be placed on the either side of the keel and this should be generally increased the thickness of pointy region and four strikes of the shell plating should be provided on the each side of the kit and should increase the thickness of the pond region. So this is what are the main stresses happening on the ship. Thank you.